Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to That Sewing Blab. We are now at our 92nd episode. And boy, oh boy, do we have a show for you tonight. Just like all nights, we're going to have some fun tonight. For those of you who are new to the show, that lovely woman over there with that beautiful smile in the dark <laughs> green, I think that is, <laughs> that's our host for tonight, Dawn Pengali from Dueling Design. And I'm her co-host, Myra Rentmeester from Simple Inspiration. And that gorgeous woman down there with all the beautiful color on, we're going to get to <laughs> We're going to get to her very and very soon, but I have a feeling that some of you may already know who she is. With that said, I just want to let you know if you have any questions, remember, we'll just go ahead and ask that question. I see we have one down there already in the ask the question link below. Just hit that link, put your question in there, and we'll get to it as soon as we can. Now, for those of you who are um, going to be watching us on the replay of Crowdcast or YouTube, which you can, uh, I just want to let you know that there are perks to being live streamed here on Crowdcast. And you can come in live and ask the person a question, the uh, guest that we have, and have them to respond to those questions immediately. That's something that doesn't happen when you watch the replays. And also, we have prizes sometimes for our guests who are actually live on the show. So it would be beneficial for you to watch the live stream if you have an opportunity to do so. So with that said, you don't want me to blab all, all night long. So I'm going to pass it over to our host so we can get this party started. Dawn? Thanks, Myra. You're welcome. Oh, we've got a good show for you tonight, ladies <laughs> and any gentlemen who might be watching. We've got Tree from Stitches TV. Um, you can't miss her, really, um, because of oh. her fabulous, <laughs> wonderful... Not, well, not because of the colors, Tree, because of the fabulously wonderful <laughs> YouTube channel she has. She does a Stitchless TV, um, a YouTube channel, and it is amazing. There is lots of um, tutorials, but then uh, refashions. Yeah. Um, she sees stuff from the runway that inspires her, and she's like, come on, we're going to get some blinds from Ikea, and boom. You know, <laughs> like, there's a reversible skirt for you. Oh, she, you're good. <laughs> tells lovely, lovely stories as well um, about like the Liberty dress. Um, you can see her when she goes on yeah. fabric dress. And then also I loved um, lots of the things that you did when you went to the knitting and stitching show. That was great. But um, the newest and the best thing, the thing that I, I'm just so excited about, she has a pattern out now too. You've got to see it. <laughs> so it's the sculptural bucket coat. And I've already purchased it. I am very, very excited. And it is, um, I don't know, there's like lots of things have similar sim silhouettes and they just change a little bit. This one's just kind of funkier, you know? And um, I think I've watched the video, a lovely video on how to put the coat together. And I think it's going to be um, an easy make. It doesn't have lots of fiddly bits. It's just cool, 100% cool, just like our guests. So, Tree, yes. thank you so much for coming yes. on. Hello. Do I teach now? Yeah. Is it my turn to speak? Sorry. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me. I don't know where to look though, but thank you for having me. <laughs> You're very welcome, and you can look anywhere you want. <laughs> um, well, I guess I'm going to start and ask the question that we ask most of our guests when they first come on. Um, just about when and why did you start sewing? When and why? Um, no, eight eight years old. And oh my, long, long time. Uh, uh, and because my mum was, uh, she was an immigrant in this country, she was from Italy, <laughs> Ooh, didn't speak any English, and uh, but could sew, uh, so she used to do piecework, so it was always around our house, as well as, if I may say, um, she used to make paper flowers as well, and mm -hmm. by the age of Seven, I was involved with the making of 5,000 paper roses for Maria Osmond's concert at Wembley. Wow. So you're, awesome. not, are you too young to know who Maria Osmond is? No, I'm not too young. I know who they well, are. Uh, <laughs> wow. That's awesome. So that's been that's a long time. 
So with that, um, knowing that you've been sewing for quite some time, and it actually shows, your experience shows in what you do on Stitch with Stevie. But um, I guess I have to ask you, were you um, self-taught or, um, or did you have professional training? Um, my mom taught me. Uh, I went to go and do a bit of professional training, uh, but left. Um, and then I went to go and work for a bridal wear designer and a woman that used to produce for some big name designers. So then she trained me. Um, and then I started producing my own collection and wow. sold, to, uh, sold to Liberties and sort of boutique around yeah. at the time, which was quite a long time ago. Wow. So you've been busy. You really didn't have time for any other formal training. You just jumped right in there. You did have uh, quite a few good mentors it sounds like i've topped up as i as i've got older i've topped up here and there with a few uh, courses particularly tr cutting i don't know if you've mm -hmm. heard of tr cutting actually i haven't got yeah. an example with okay. uh, i studied with shingo sato in milan um oh, and, wow. yeah and whenever he comes over here he lets me film which is why mm -hmm. i'm able to have some film of some of his tr cutting techniques which is quite special that's yes, awesome. I saw those on your channel. I think it's very interesting. You, you see a lot of people doing flat pattern, maybe getting into a little bit of drape. But yeah, you look at things like TR pattern cutting mm. as That's well amazing. as um, subtraction cutting. Um, like yeah. you're, you're not just oh, sticking great. in one little aisle. You are oh. celebrating fabric and garments and accessories in all forms. Well, if you were to ask, if anyone ever asked me, oh, you know, what do you do? What's it all about? For me, what it's all about is I try to, if I find out anything from the fashion industry, any specialist technique or uh, specialist uh, places to get things done that domestic sewers can now use, then I like to talk about it and I like to share it because I'm all about anybody can be a designer, you know, their own designer, not necessarily a professional designer. That's a really great. Well, what inspires your work? I should have prepared that one, shouldn't I? Um, <laughs> uh, the quickest answer is usually amazing, amazing fabric. Usually, um, although not always, actually. Amazing fabrics like the ones behind you, we see a little bit of there. Well, yeah, and look, there's some more amazing oh that fabric. is beautiful as we are speaking of fabric can i mention something actually sure. am i allowed to is that all right so you know yes. that pattern yeah okay. uh -huh. i had i had an online competition going on and um the prize the big mega prize for it lots of people will get prizes and we'll do it again and again but um i might need to take my headphones off and stand back but it will be worth it, especially with you, Myra, being in America. Um, the big, big, massive prize is this. So I'm going to show you now. Is it all right okay. that I do this? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh. Oh. oh, my gosh. Is that fabric? Is, I wonder if that... Wow. Wow. So, wow. Is, that's fabric? <laughs> that is fabric, yeah. And then the reverse side has um, oh. the right. It was, it was from a, a really, really out of, uh, old out of copyright postcard. And I played around with the image and oomphed up the colors so that they were a bit more attractive. And then I did that when you mirror it and do that kinescopy mm. thing. And I printed it onto like a waterproof uh, fabric for someone to make a sculptural bucket coat. Um, yeah, that's a big water noodle prize. Oh my goodness. That's I amazing. <laughs> and I've wow. also been experimenting with printing on sequin at, at the digital fabric printers. Can I say what they're called? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, they're called Fashion Formula and they're really, really brilliant. And they've sponsored me this fabric um, 
to be the big top prize for the best sculptural bucket coat this winter and then we'll do it again for spring and I got them to print onto some sequin fabric as well as an experiment and it's come out really really well really well oh, oh my goodness oh um, my gosh I can't so wait to well, Dawn, are you going to enter? Because I'm excited to see your code. Are you going to enter the contest? Yeah, I've, um, I don't. I didn't even think about the the contest. I saw the coat and I was like, "Oh my giddy aunt, that's mine." <laughs> I've got my like this is my my sleeve pattern all PDF'd and ready, and I have my fabric here because I haven't cut it out yet because I'm I can't think of what oh, binding yeah. I want to do. The fabric's lovely. Yeah, yeah that that's gorgeous. It's really yeah, beautiful. beautiful. Um, wow. I washed it though, and it lost, it lost a bit of you know. Sometimes they put sizing and stuff on it. Um, yeah, yeah it lo it's a bit softer than I was thinking. But I think your coat, I think your coat is the type of coat that uh, it looks it would look gorgeous in stiff fabric. But it, I think yeah. it would also look gorgeous in drapey fabric. Maybe you oh. could show us the one behind you so people could well, who haven't seen yeah. it yet. The, the one I have on, so I have to take this off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's uh, your Gucci one. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Now that's a softer fabric, Dawn. That looks like a softer striping. Yeah, I think it's between the two. It's between the, the one that she has in the background there where you can see it's got a lovely sharp line on the pot, on the, the side there, yes. the pink, the yes. pink striped one. Yes, it's I agree. Of, it's in so between I, those two. So I didn't uh -huh. hear anything that you said. So I think yours is going to be like that one. Yeah, yeah, I can it may be a bit in between the two. Yeah, I'm I'm because so excited. It has, weight. It, ha mm. it has weight your fabric, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is heavier. Look really great. Really good. And I quite like um for people who haven't seen the pattern before, um, you see that it kind of comes out at the bottom and then comes back in. Just uh, by moving it slightly, you can change the angle of how much it sticks out. It so you know, if you're lower. a bit shyer and you don't want to let your freak flag fly, you can tuck it in a little bit more and um, I, I just think it's lovely though. And um, some people have said they've made at least 12 of them well, <laughs> in the car. I can, see, I can see her right there. She's becoming quite famous actually. It's just shame she oh, can't she... come on here. She's more of an expert than me. She's put a couple of steps in. She's adapted it to have a hood. Um, she's created it so that it has its own quilted lining that fits inside like a detachable one. She's made it in leather, um, an embossed near pink fabric. <laughs> She's adapted it to be like the, oh, where's my hand? There. The sculptural bucket dress, which would be, oh, look, there we go. The sculptural uh -huh. bucket dress. Um, so she's made two dresses. What else have you done, Judd? <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully Maybe we can have, um, yeah, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then mine, like Myra and I, yeah, when we have people, um, when we ask questions from the audience near the end, maybe if we're really lucky, she'll come on. But I mean, if she yeah. can't, we understand. But uh, yeah. yeah, I can see why it's caught her imagination, though. It is a, a very lovely coat. And I'm sure, like, because she's made so many of them. And you see, mm -hmm. it's not like there's a lot of super fiddly bits. I mean, she could probably, uh, she, she'd have to tell us, get one of them, make one of those in like a couple of hours, probably the most. Three hours? I mean, she might. 12 coats and three dresses. <laughs> oh, 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 I wonder who's going to have that fabric. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's, um, she's a bit of a one woman factory, actually. In fact, I'm sure she has got a factory. Wow. She's using so many. 12 oh, coats. And three and dresses. Oh, yeah, I kiss you wow. back. Um, <laughs> I don't so know her. I don't, I don't know her at all. I think you live in Holland, Judge, don't you? And, and this is a really amazing thing about the whole YouTube channel thing. I mean, as you know, we, we make peanuts on YouTube. I'm sure you're aware of that, yeah? Um, <laughs> even if you have got six and a half million hits, believe me, you still make peanuts. But the most wonderful thing about it is the whole community yeah. that, mm. that, that happens around it and the doors that it opens so if i go anywhere with oh holland yeah i thought so <laughs> um, if, if if i if there's an exhibition at the victorian albert museum or the national portrait museum because i have six and a half million hits i just say that and they say yeah 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 you can come to the press launch i'd never be able to do that if i didn't have my youtube channel and 
that's why I do it. I don't do it for the money because there's no money. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful experience, but I'm rubbish at business, so that might be why. <laughs> well, I can understand why you have so many hits. <laughs> beautiful, well, beautiful work. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. And we should definitely, um, I think everyone here has probably seen um, your channel before. Whoops. Yeah, there it is. Um, but very easy to find, Stitchless TV on YouTube. And I'm talking in an amazing amount of videos, yeah. uh, everything from finding scenes. Um, yeah, there's just so much there, uh, mini bucket bags, going to the great British sewing bee. Um, yeah, it's and I, it's a fabulous YouTube channel. You definitely have to check it out if you, if you like sewing. So Stitchless TV. So why did you, like, okay, you, you saw your mom sewing. Um, uh, how did you go from being a sewist to being uh, a sewist on YouTube to helping other yeah. people and sharing your gift with the world? You really want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, because uh, one day um, I thought to myself, this is before the big sewing um, renaissance, I guess. You yep. could call it that. So, okay, about eight years ago, I went to a production company and pitched for a TV program. I don't know if you're familiar with Jamie Oliver in yes. America. Yes. Now, I'm not saying I know Jamie Oliver, okay, but in order for me to get the message across about the format of the program that I believe would be a popular program, and now everyone's going to miss it, no doubt. Um, um, I, I said I wanted to create a program like a Jamie Oliver type program where you rely upon really fantastic ingredients. So for us, you rely upon really fantastic fabric and you stick to really simple design so that anybody can do it and get really fantastic um, results. And, and, and the camera would come around with me to all these brilliant, you know, amazing fabric shops that are all over London and, you know, eventually the world, um, but London's enough for now. Um, and I just think, it. and then, you know, we take the fabric and we take it back to the studio and, you know, we make something and then we go off somewhere else and, you know, chat chat to a few, a few sewers on the way and stuff like that. Anyway, there's a bit more to it than that. Anyway, they laughed me out. It was two years before the Great British Sewing Bee. It turned out to be one of the biggest media it was called zodiac media productions i hope that's the right thing to say i didn't know they were really big at the time and they said to me um maybe go and look at the shopping channel um this is too niche a market no one's interested in sewing um why don't you go and set up a youtube channel i thought yeah i'm gonna go and do it myself i'll go and set up a youtube channel so i see and it's so liberating to go from being a designer and being all like really secretive about your ideas to getting an idea in your head and thinking right i'm going to share it with everybody you know it's a very liberating thing good wow good for you <laughs> when someone tells you you know or how does it take off if someone um, sent you lemons you make lemonade <laughs> and you, that's exactly what you did <laughs> yeah, that, just didn't make it is fabulous though like even how you mentioned if you know there's a shop like for example one of your videos you were at a uh, uh not a conference but at a show and you saw someone who was doing um pleading oh you're and good you <laughs> and you were you were telling everyone about the pleading you know like because you want it's people to, it's, this isn't that expensive you can send them only one meter come on look at all the different yeah. things you can do like you're, you're not just keeping it to yourself. You're no. like, okay, I'm going to wait until my, my season's done and then I'll get this cool leather pleating or whatever out and then I'll just tell everyone where I got it. Yeah. Actually, you know that pleating play? Um, so he's invited. So that was at the, the Graduate Fashion Week. So they had a stand there and then just off the cuff, he allowed me to interview him and he showed me all his samples. But um, he's invited me to go to his actual studio. And I think it's 100 years old. I can't remember it. It's been passed down through the family and they've got pleating moths that go back like a hundred years. Oh. And I keep meaning to go and I will go soon. 
Um, and so he, uh, he, he said, I can take some fabric and all. Actually, there's another story here. Can I tell you something else? <laughs> Please do. Yeah. We love your story. Okay. History. So, so ran randomly on Instagram, <laughs> there's this Egyptian company, and I feel really bad because I can't remember what they're called now. Oh, I really should remember because they were so kind. So off the back of that video, and uh, me having made the video about the pleating, they said, oh, we love it so much, Tree. Can we send you one of our moulds? And I said, you sure? Are you sure you want to do that? Because it's very, very <laughs> labour intensive. There's lots and mm -hmm. lots of work. So he told me to go through all his pleats. Oh, what's this called? Uh, he told me to go through all his moulds that are on his Instagram page and just choose whichever one I wanted. So I chose the Mercedes Star um, pleating mould. And then about a week later, it arrived in the post. It's like massive, one metre by one metre, a hand pleated mould of this Mercedes star, like re a repeat of a three dimensional Mercedes star. I don't know if you might, I don't know if it's called a Mercedes, they call it a Mercedes star. Um, and so I will take that to cement pleating and I can get leather, polyester, silk, velvet, anything pleated and it will become like this Mercedes star repeat. Wow. Wow. Nice. nice. That is awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Oh, my word. And uh, I was going to say, and it doesn't just stop at pleating. Like, um, you show people how to do sublimation printing, how, you know, get a company, send it out, and then you can use your iron and do it, and you had great results. Well, or, well, you, you know, get the stencil from, from my website, and look, it'll. I can show you how to spray paint a bikini kind of on a on a t-shirt yeah. that was really cute too. i love that, it, <laughs> that was awesome. i love that you share all these ideas because like <laughs> i didn't know that you could do the sublimation printing with an iron i thought you needed a clamp exactly. in order to do it and so. you know what mm. so my, my sister studied for three years i hope it's still the right thing to say um, my sister studied for three years at a very very prestigious school of art okay and um, she didn't know, she didn't believe that I could do it with an iron. And so I, in the first film, I used the heat press. But because mm -hmm. of the temperature and because of the way we were doing it, I thought, I bet I could do it with an iron. So, <laughs> so in the film, I go home and I do it with the iron. And you know what? It's easier to do it with the iron. Mm -hmm. You have more control and you can also go in again and sort of, uh, add to the picture so I could take a little mm -hmm. house and go in again and put it on top of the grass or something. I feel like I'm talking too much, but that's what oh, I'm no, meant no, to no. do, isn't it? I'm meant to do that, right? No, so. you're, you're, you're not talking too much. I was looking to see if I could yeah. find the video in your YouTube no, to show people. No. People, no, ask no. me questions. <laughs> Come on, <Jeff. laughs> Oh, no, your your conversation is just wonderful. Don't. I love, I, I yeah. really enjoy your story. <laughs> you can continue. It's fine. Um, while she's looking for something, I just want to say, do you have like any um, one project that you've worked on you know i know i spent a lot of years and a lot of projects but is there one that just stands out in your mind that you just absolutely love to work on love to work on mm -hmm. well very often i don't know if you find <laughs> it um but very often your favorite project may not have been your favorite project whilst you were making it because uh -huh. very often it's might have been really time consuming and oh. you head in a bit. Uh -huh. So so I don't know if you find that this happens to you, but when I have a project and it's you know quite challenging, when I get to the end of it, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. And I need it to go off somewhere and I just go in a drawer for maybe a month and uh -huh. um and let it just settle for a while and, and I need I recover from it. And then you know, and then I get it out again. It's like, oh my God, did I, did I really make that? That's, that's amazing. <laughs> so, shall I grab one of those? It's, it's just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. Yeah, I might even be able to keep one. Right. So, this. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that? 
<laughs> yes. Okay, so that is the door. Oh, there we go. Right. Ooh. Okay, so that's the back. Oh, that's the back. Okay. That is adorable. Is that made out of denim? Yeah, I sort of entered this uh, competition. That's the fun. Wow. Oh my gosh. Now, the, the side, the side bustle thing. And it has a vintage star. Wow. Now, Tree, is, yeah, is, is that a vest or a jacket? I'll take my glasses off because I think I can just put it on the thing awful on Tree. Yeah, is I it, can put it on if you want. It's, um, it's, it's a short sleeve jacket and it's made out of three pairs of jeans. Oh, uh, that's a. Ribbing from a jumper and wow. vintage scarf lining. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Now that's what they call wearable art. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's gorgeous. Because it nearly killed me doing it, but I quite like it. <laughs> oh, that's the <laughs> one. We, okay. we, we, yeah, that's the one. Well, there's, a, there's been one since, but it's in my bedroom. I can't get it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, it has in that same, in that same uh, line, I guess. Has there ever been one that you project you worked on that you said, "Oh my God, what was I thinking?" Uh, no. <laughs> oh, no. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Yeah, but I, I, oh damn it, I've got it here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and in fact, when I wore it in the video, now what video did I wear it in? I can't remember. It might have been the leggings video. I can't remember. But basically. Um, cultural bucket pocket, um, <laughs> but it was like a vest top, which is fine, that's fine. Uh -huh. But when you make it out of fabric that's got huge lips on, that each of them are different colors, then you look a bit nuts. So, <laughs> e everyone said, What were you thinking? And I actually, <laughs> said, oh, what was I thinking? Yeah, it's well, that's too funny. Tree, um, you're um, the lady that you seem to know had asked a question. I saw it earlier, but she asked, how did you come up with the idea of the sculpt sculptural bucket coat? She, you know, and she mentioned she was addicted to it, but she wants to know how did you come up with the idea for it? Yeah, I'm not really sure, actually. <laughs> uh, wow. I'm very attractive, attracted to sculptural shape. But sculptural shapes feel where you have a bit small going on. Um, and I, I have this thing about things happening on the hip, which is quite strange because I've got a really big bottom. So, uh -huh. so you think I'd want everything kind of small. But, but I think I've discovered that when you've got this exaggerated thing that happens around the hip area, and if you're quite small on top, the mind knows that that's not going to be your hip. And so you can mm -hmm. sort of hide your hip underneath well that's that's what i think i think anyway i think it hides my head Maybe I'm, um, I'm, th I'm thinking this is going to happen the same way with your sculptor coat i agree because it's so big people know that's not really your no. hips and you're like no. how big are they <laughs> but i have to say if you can make them come down low it is really effective and it's a bit more cocoon like hmm. uh, I have a quick, just a super quick, we were talking about this earlier and I felt bad that we didn't have any videos. So I, I this is just a super, like a still from her uh, YouTube and you can see that she does have some of the sublimation printing here, um, both in the on the vest in the front and on the shirt in the back as well as on the other shirt. Oh yeah. Um, it was gorgeous and you pick gorgeous things to put on as the prints as well. Yeah, I I, I just love that. And you know, I, I was even thinking the first one that she brought up that she was saying, I guess is gonna be a part of contest or challenge. That I know it sounds it's gonna sound crazy, but I would love to have that beautiful print in a dress. I just I would love that. Um I didn't hear half of what you said because I went to go and get this. Um, so, so that I did on a heat press, um, and my sister got me to deliberately create pleats in it because it didn't fit on the A3 heat press very well. 
which is another yeah. reason to do um, to, to do it with an iron because then it can be as big as you want. But you need mm. to put a towel on a table and and then um, press it on top of the. That's beautiful. Table. And yeah, that's on a, Now, did you, when you do something like that, did you did it on the fabric first and then made the cami, correct? No. So the whole thing about sublimation printing for me is that um, I use it to upcycle clothes. So otherwise, oh. more so, you, you know, you oh. can get some interesting cuffs or an interesting button mm. stand, um, you know, on an otherwise boring shirt. Um, wow. But the law is it has to have at least 60% polyester for the sublimation print to impregnate the fabric and become one with the fabric. Oh, okay. Yeah. That is beautiful. Oh, that's absolutely gorgeous. I love that. Just truly love it. Um, now, with all of your um, experience, is there any one thing that you find challenging? Uh, okay. Now, I did think about that the other day, actually. I can't think of what it is now, but if, if I do think of it, I'll, I'll tell you. But meanwhile, <laughs> I'll refer to a, a, an, a brilliant YouTuber called Colleen G. Lee. And can I suggest oh. that everybody goes and looks her up, okay? Because she has got a library of the most fantastic, extensive collection of sewing techniques. Um, and previously, my my things that I feared or I couldn't get my head around were bound buttonholes. So she she very kindly came down from Manchester, which is quite far away, it's like about four hours away. And um, I'd never met her before in my life. Uh, she was a complete stranger to me, apart from in the virtual world. Um, but I pretended to my family I knew her really well. Otherwise, they would have her stay. So I said, yeah, we know her really well. We always sat at all the shows. I never met her before. So she came and she, came and she stayed the night in my house. And fortunately, she wasn't like a mass murderer or anything. She was really, really nice. Anyway, so she, she did a video with me demonstrating how to do a bound buttonhole. And they're really easy. Or she makes it really easy. So that's Colleen G. Lee, and it's the fashion yes, sewing blog, isn't it? Yes, we're very familiar. We've had her on the show. And Thank I'm you. glad, yeah, I'm very oh, glad that you. Oh, <laughs> she's lovely. Lovely, yeah. lovely, yeah. Really nice. And I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up because I was thinking in my mind earlier when we were having, you and I were having another conversation, I, she came to my mind right away. And the reason is, is because you were saying about, you know, meeting uh, some lovely sewing people along the way when you were doing something. And I had a conversation with her and it was, you know, because in some areas in the UK, I guess, are not as open to sewing as other areas. And I'm just wondering with all of what you, cause she's further away from you. So do you find that in your area or is it, no, it's the opposite. Okay. So, so sometimes when you live in London, you're really guilty of being clueless about anywhere else. Okay, and, mm -hmm. and it's a really bad thing. But um, she told me that in Manchester there are hardly any fabric shops. Uh, yes. There isn't much of a sewing community. Um, her nearest fabric shop or her best fabric shop is Abercran, or someone can tell mm -hmm. me actually. It's really well known. Um, uh, they're supposed to be really, really good. Um, but in London, oh, it's everywhere. There, there, oh. is, there, were, there were like sewing shops and fab, fabric shops just springing up all over the place. But having said that, dare I touch on this subject? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, um, there are, oh, thank you very much, Nina. Abba Khan. Khan. Work there, yeah. Work there, Nina. 
Abacon. Mm -hmm. Abacon is supposed to be really brilliant, very, very massive, and you okay. need to invite me to your shop if you work at Abacon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so what, what I have found is, uh, I guess like all communities, uh, you get your, they could be called factions, factions, factions. Mm -hmm. So you get like, so you get this type of sewing blogger, that type of sewing blogger, other types of sewing people. And uh, I feel I've always felt a little bit on the edges. I've always felt a little bit on the edges. No, 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 it's fine. Fine. You don't have to oh, okay. I think I, I placed, I think I've placed myself on the edges. And I think when people are fairly new to sewing and then they go and learn and they 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 train, they do uh -huh. things all properly, properly. But uh -huh. I've been working in the industry for years and there's certain things that I know you just don't need to do to get really good results, okay? And uh -huh. I'm not the slightest bit snooty about sewing and, and certain sewing communities can be very snooty about sewing and they have their techniques and this is the way you're supposed to do it. Well, yeah. my attitude is, you know, as long as you get the job done, if you use a glue stick to hold the damn thing in place before you <laughs> sew, just, just do it, you know. Just let the glue go off yeah. first yeah. before you sew, otherwise you're going to glue up your needle. You know, I don't care what method you, you do, just as long as you get good results. Yes. Yeah. Really accessible. Yeah. Sorry? You're making it accessible to more people, yeah. you know, like... Yeah. Oh, not stressing them about, about it being perfect, you're saying exactly. oh, it'll still look fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and it, if yeah. you make a mistake or it has an imperfection, embrace, honestly, embrace that imperfection yes. and yeah. you will probably grow to love it or it will end up being an idea for a, a new project. That's so true. Absolutely. I, I preach that as much as I possibly can, you know, because you don't want to scare off the uh, novices, the new no, people, the, no. and that kind of perfection does scare them away because yeah. if they can't reach that perfection goal, then a lot of times they get frustrated. And okay. that perfection goal they're looking for can come somewhere with more experience down the road. But for right now, they just need to enjoy the process and have fun with it. So this is where I really shoot myself in the foot because it's something else I have a reputation for. <laughs> So whilst the great British sewing scene yeah. is, is wonderful in that it's really created even more of a sewing community and an interesting sewing. If there's one thing I really did not like about the program is that I think it also put people off sewing. This, um, you know, uh, this, this, this striving to be the best or do it the most yeah. perfectly. Um, I don't know, I just wish there was another way. I wish it was more about the development of the person uh, that had started not knowing anything and then look, look what they, they've been able to achieve in six weeks or however many episodes. And what yeah. they were willing what they were willing to try. Because I guess some people oh, like it yeah. might not grow yeah. a lot because they, they might not have made as many mistakes, but maybe they didn't try to make their own fabric or yeah, 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 yeah. I am um, sewing program basically. I was gonna say I agree with you how you say you know how there's kind of different niches within the community as well. Like um, for example, um, where I went to school, everything was aimed at uh, getting you in the industry which is more like you're going to be working in factory. So for example, like you, pins were, weren't something that were used because notches, because the ladies didn't, they were sewing the same pant leg, you know, they have a pile of a hundred yeah. stacked beside yeah. them. They, they don't want to put in and out pins. There's a notch or whatever, and that's all it was. So, I mean, all my, I find all my education was kind of lumped that way. And now that I'm watching a lot, a lot more YouTube videos and things, and I'm seeing that people do things a slightly different way, like at the amount of seam allowances they have, they might cut them off after, whereas in the industry, they're not going to yeah. take the garment when it's done and trim the neck. They're going to make sure it has a trimmed uh, seam allowance at the beginning. So I, I, I see that there's like slightly differences and that can put you off. It's like, I, I won't lie. I'm, I'm almost nervous about saying this is how I do it because somebody will come back and say, well, it's much easier to do it this way exactly. or why are you doing that? Which exactly. comes to, uh, 
Yeah. But it, but it's fine to hear other people's ways that they do them. Just, you know, I, I just, I love, like when I do things, there's a particular guy, and what's his name? Richie James. He always has something to say. <laughs> but it's really <laughs> great. So whenever, whenever I show a way of doing it, he says, hey, Tree, do you know what? I think I found an easier way to do it. But he, he always says something like that. But it's really good. I love, I love to hear, you know, the other ways that people do it. But on the subject of evil voodoo pins, they are so <laughs> overused. Mm. But, but if, if you really, the real reason, the real, real reason why I stopped using pins so much was when I first had children, um, my husband, partner, um, he said to me, there is no way that you're going to do sewing whilst we've got a baby around the house. So I thought, what? I have to do sewing. I've got lots of sewing. <laughs> so I had to find a way to to not use pins. And then I remembered that when we used to manufacture the Jean Muir and, and stuff, um, do you know what? They just used notches. They, did, they didn't mm. do all this pin business. And I have to say, last week when I went to um, Fashion Capital, the, the factory that I, I worked mm. with sometimes, uh, who have a fantastic training academy, everybody. You should go and learn <laughs> stuff there. Um, uh, she confirmed to me again that they don't use pins, but the reason they don't use pins is because sometimes if the pin breaks or gets stuck in the garment, it sets off the alarms in the shop. So all the garments, when they're all done, they go through this thing, and if there's any metal in there, it sets off an alarm, and they then have to search for where is the metal. Oh. So, so that's their other reason for not using pins, and they you just don't need to if you're doing that simple, great thing. Yeah. It's kind of like a training wheel too. Like it makes you feel more confident. Yes, this will match. I've pinned it together. I see it matches. Now I'm confident to go to the sewing machine. And yes. I think when I first went to school, it took a long time to get out of that. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have any pins. How do I know it'll match? If you have a good yeah. pattern when you start off or yeah. if you've you know, measured well, it should be fine. Yeah. Yes. I, I actually always add notches. I treat them like landmarks. I line up the two fabrics together. So say I've got a meter long seam. I line up the fabrics together. If I've got two velvets, you try and do velvet with pins, won't you? Or, you know, this, you would be able to do it. So I line it all up perfectly. And I just do loads of notches, maybe 20 centimetres, 10 centimetres apart. What's that in inches? Five, six inches. Um, and I, I just, as I go along, I just make sure all those notches line up. And then I'm guaranteed that by the time I get to the end, that the velvet hasn't shifted yeah. or the silk hasn't shifted because what happens is fabric sponches up to the pin, doesn't it? And you get that great big lump, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, sometimes. So use notches, bad pins, pins. <laughs> so you, 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 you know, There are certain situations where you really need pins. You can't do fitting, draping, you know, like collars yeah. sometimes. Yeah, I agree. Yes, yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see, what else can we add? Oh, with everything that you have going on, I mean, it's not, it may be fun to you to have, you know, everything you have on Stitchless TV, but it is truly work to do everything oh, you do. Oh, how do you, so how, do, how do you keep a balance with everything you have going on? Well, well, I, I haven't been balancing very well recently, hence no videos for about three weeks. Um, there, re there really is a lot of work, everybody. There really is a lot of work. If I do an on-location thing, I have to go to the place, set up, you know, set up the camera, and then go in front of it, go, no, 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 you know, talk in front of the camera, interview the person, and then go behind the camera again, check if things okay, go back again, uh, wow. and then go around and film as well. And I end up often with about... I don't know, two, three hours of footage. And then I have to try and edit that down to a wow. film that is, I try and make it 10 minutes, but I rarely can do that. And it ends up being about 20 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. The editing is a lot of work. But also, if I can say, I'm not sure if people are aware that there's a massive element of, you know, you have to be in the mood. And if you're not in the mood, you have to yes. get yourself in the mood to yes. stand there and talk to yourself. It's like, hi, 
I'm Chi, you know, I feel really lovely today. <laughs> so I don't know what telling you, you know. It is, it is. And, and then sometimes, you know, between Instagram and all the social media and then talking to the camera, I get absolutely sick of myself. <laughs> I really, really do. I get so sick of myself. I wish I could interview people more. Yeah. Anyway, we're, we're doing, are we, have we gone over five? Um, um, I don't mind, I'm just saying, I can't believe I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> we have about 15 minutes, uh, but we do have some oh, questions. Okay, questions. Uh, some, some questions. And if um, anyone wants to come online and ask Tree live their question, please let us know in the comments. We'd love to have you come on. And yeah, while we wait to good. see if anyone would like to, even if they put a question already, um, they can ask that. Or if you have a different question, um, just tell me in the comments and we'll invite you on. And while we're waiting, maybe Tree, I'm really curious, what's next for Stitchless TV? Do you have any like big future plans? Because I mean, I don't oh, know what you haven't covered. Uh, oh, no, there's a lot of, there's loads of stuff. I did think you were going to say this actually. So, um, Okay, I'm so prepared. I've got everything all around me. So I, I've got to reach, reach down here, okay? So. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see. Ooh. What has she got in the shiny box? I know, lots of color around her. It's really pretty. Oh, you gotta love color. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's next? I can't answer big question of what's next with Stitches TV. Hopefully, more sponsorship, please. Can people sort of get me to try out their products? And it's mm -hmm. only, only if I like them do I talk about them. I won't talk about anything unless I think it's really brilliant. So, oh, that's so, great. But I can talk about next videos, right? So you may or may not know that I really like using uh, scarves, vintage scarves, and uh -huh. used scarves to make things. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. So, so that was made with, um, I was so lucky, I was able to get, I, I bought one scarf, so that's the scarf. Uh -huh. Cool. Okay. And then later on, in another market, I found exactly the same scarf to do what you just saw, yeah? Um, yeah. Oh, so I, I like making things out of vintage scarves, but I also like making things out of new scarves. So I'm going to take this off. So. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> It reminds me of the Jetsons. <laughs> yeah, that was so cool. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Neat. Or something like that. Um, what is the designer? <coughs> Betsy um, Johnson? Betsy Johnson, yeah. With a lot of her color. So I didn't hear I, what you were saying because I had my headphones off. What did you say? Oh, no, I was saying that it's uh, very uh, colorful. You have a lot of color going on. And I said it reminds me of the designer, Betsy Johnson, because she uses Betsy. a lot of color. Oh, is she like Stella Jean? She called Stella Jean, American designer. Uh -huh. I have to look up Betsy Johnson. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to say was, okay, very often, when you, uh, if you go and buy stars, you can get much more unusual prints than you can when you go buy fabric. So these, it's polyester crepe, it's not silk, but it was 22 mm -hmm. pounds in the sale. So, mm -hmm. so I bought two of them. Um, one of them I'm gonna bond to a, a, a sort of spongy fabric to give a different body to it. So I can mm -hmm. make this pinafore dress that mm -hmm. I have on. I flashed at you a minute ago, which is actually an adult chain Barna rip-off fabric. Um, and then the other scarf, I'm going to make a, a little blouse, a kind of frilly thing here, and I will wear them together. Ooh, yeah. Right. So you, you did ask what's next for Stitches TV. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. 
you meant a big thing, didn't you? But that's a that's a project that I will be sharing on. Oh, See? I'm that's, thankful you told us about that. Even that's yeah, it sounds very yeah. interesting. It does. Um, it looks like Judd also asked you, are you going to sell your gorgeous fabric designs anytime soon? Oh, thanks, Judd. You, you should be my personal manager, Judd. You're so good. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so that prize that I showed you before and things like this. Okay. That's beautiful. Um, yeah. So on this uh, digital fabric print, site which is called fashion formula which is a uk based digital printing site they have an extensive library of designs you you can go there and you can choose your flowers or whatever and then it, you can select from 50 different types of fabric that you want it printed on so i'm going to have my own online shop within their site just with my design on it Wow. Wow. So, so, so you'll be able to buy that New York design all set up. You don't need to do anything. All you do is select the design <laughs> and then select if you want it on a crepe, a silk crepe, a linen, a neoprene, a waterproof yeah. fabric, swimming costume fabric. Yeah. Wow, that I was just saying that to Dawn when you were when you were a waitress, I was saying that to Dawn, that New York scape. I would love to have that. Uh, I could just see a a beautiful dress made out of that. It would just yeah. be stunning and shocking at the same time. Yeah. I just, yeah. Simple, simple dress with a yes. eye mm. yeah. yeah. If so, I get the body for it, it would be one of those fitted dresses, <laughs> pretty straps, V-neck, you know, something that just, wow. <laughs> We've um, invited Crystal on. It appears when I have her come up it, it's just a blank spot but i'm not sure crystal Hello. can you can you hear us maybe you can ask a question even if we can see you can hello me. hello no we, we can hear you can hear me now okay can you see me now no, no but we can we hear you oh uh, i don't know what's going on oh sounding a little funny <laughs> um okay okay yeah. Video. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, that turned the video off. Yeah. Um, that turned it off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Crystal. Technology is lovely sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know what did. Do you have? A, uh, well, my question was, um, when did? How, how did you learn how to pattern design? Did you go? Did you learn how to do blocks and? Um, things like that at a certain school, or you just picked it up along the way? Do you want to know honestly? <laughs> I, 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 I basically, I mean, I learned what I learned when I worked at the uh, the place that used to produce for designers and for these two wedding dresses. So I learned there, I learned from my mum, but really, um, yeah, I just, I just learn along the way. I'm not brilliant at pattern cutting, but you know, I can do what I want to, to do. But can I tell you something else that um, I will do a video for, okay? And, and a lot of the big design houses do this, okay? So there you are thinking that they come up with these brilliant, amazing designs, right? Oh, I've got to be careful what I say again. Am I doing that shooting myself in the foot thing? <laughs> <laughs> so many of them simply go to Zara. And, and, and pick up a design, take it apart, and then with like a Gerber uh, digitalizing uh, tool, they, they iron it, they'll put it on the board or they'll trace it out in paper and they just digitalize mm. it and maybe manipulate a little bit and, and let, you know, do a load of grades and, and that's it. But I, I think I've discovered, some, discovered something really amazing. Have you got time to, for me to tell you? Yes. Because it is, it is something that I do, okay. Uh, and I think I think I won't get into trouble for it. So imagine you've got imagine you've got a pair of jeans, right? Take apart your jeans or, or cut up the seams. Forget about you know that you don't want anymore, okay? But they fit you really perfectly. They fit you really perfectly. And then put one piece on the ground, and then put some landmark things where you exactly know the measurements of them, like a ten centimeter square and a five centimeter square. 
and then stand somewhere really high up and take a photo of it, right? And then that's basically your pattern. If you, if you, if you can enlarge it, the actual size, so that that 10 centimetre square is 10 centimetre, the 5 centimetre is actually 5 centimetre, you know, without any software or anything, but if you can enlarge up that file for those, those measurements to be exact, and then when you print it in the uh, what do you print it in PDF, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can you can posterize it and tile it, and that will be your pattern. Does that make sense? Or is that yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, oh, we can yeah. just rip off all our clothes. We don't have to <laughs> that Yes, yes, maybe, maybe. Absolutely. <laughs> I want to thank Crystal for asking the question. We're really sorry yes. that you couldn't come on tonight, but we do have a couple other questions. Um, thanks again, Crystal. So thank you, Crystal. Um, um, that was Crystal's first question there. And then um, we have, oh, another one from Crystal too. What is the gold fabric? What is the gold fabric? What is the gold was it the well, little square that she held up? Was it the little square oh, oh, on the denim jacket? She means sorry. Oh, thanks, okay. thanks Crystal. <laughs> so she's just looking for the denim jacket now. Uh, the gold fabric. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it's ripping from uh, an old. Jumper. Mm. Can I just oh. say, socks, ribbing at the bottom of jumpers, ribbing around the neck, ribbing of cuffs, never throw them away. Always keep them because they're a really cheap source of quality, quality ribbing for when you make your top, when you require ribbing. I've see, seen that in a couple of your videos, like, um, was it a 30 minute coat as well that had it oh, on the neckline yeah. as well? Um, yeah, you, you make fantastic use out of jumpers, even some of your husband's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually don't think he knows, even now, I don't think he knows. No, 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 yes. But the other thing is, resources are everywhere. Like, people often mm -hmm. say to me, oh, I live in a really remote area. I wish I had, you know, haberdashery shops like you have, like William G. And that, but you know, oh, brilliant example. Have I got time? Yes, brilliant example. Okay, this, let's get rid of that. This bag, okay, this bag, the zip on it, if I do that zip, the zip, look at that zip, right? See that zip? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Lovely zip pull. Can you see how lovely that zip mm. is? Oh, you know yeah. where it was from? It was from my son's wetsuit that he grew out of about two years ago. So, so whenever there's any hardware on an old napkin, mm. rucksack, piece of clothing, I just, I don't even unpick it actually. I cut it off and then I unpick it when I use it and I just store it away. I've got quite a lot of stuff. Very clever. <laughs> and then we have one other question because we're getting we're keeping you late. We know it's like was it okay. one in the morning there, so we better hurry. Yeah. Um, this is from Nina. She's been lo lovely, wow. very helpful in the comments. Thank you, Nina. Um, this is great tree. I was going to sleep, but then I saw this on Facebook. Oh, this is not a question. Oh. <laughs> yes, Nina. I'm ha we're very happy that you joined us. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was one. One more question too, Dawn, from um, Crystal. Oh. Uh, was there gold piping? I think there was gold piping yeah. on the jacket. Yeah, but do you know what? If ever you do piping on a jacket, particularly fat piping, don't ever do zigzag. Okay, <laughs> try to try to make those points. It's fine for all these curves. Uh -huh. So these curves, what I've done with these curves is a TR cutting technique. So I absorbed the bust up, the formless of the bust up, I absorbed it into a more interesting style line. Um, and putting the piping in the curve was a dream, but 
the up and down zigzag bags were not. Um, <laughs> so I just flashed this at you. Have any of you seen this video? So um, making use of the old, uh, well, it wasn't actually new, uh, baby soft balls. If you take the stuffing out, you can you can make it into a purse really easily. I like those oh, things yeah. like that too. It's so cute. So, so it's a really nice little purse. We have a video for that. Yeah. I think that's just one another example of how you do. You think outside the box, both in techniques, yes. fabrics, um, and yeah, you don't just cover, you know, uh, I, this is a sewing pattern, this is the garment I right. made from it each week. So, um, uh, yeah, I think you need to go to, everyone needs to go check out her, you know, her video YouTube channel if you have not Stitchless TV because it is jam-packed of, like if you just almost play a YouTube bingo, I don't know if you ever do that, you just randomly click on something and then you click on another one, you don't even look at the title, you, you'll learn like tons of stuff. It's fabulous. <laughs> yeah. um, I think it, I think people, I like to think that people, it's more about the inspiration of the idea. I like to think that, that they, you know, even if they don't do that actual thing that I've shown them, that it's planted a seed for them to go off and do another idea from yes. that idea, that kind of thing. Definitely. I agree. Okay, well, we've had you. It's been an awesome pleasure to have you with oh, us, yes. Tree. I mean, just amazing. We uh, yes. love your work and you and your exuberant style, as someone mentioned here. I've been given yeah, they have, haven't they? Thank you very much. Selena. Selena. But um, I know it is 1.30 in the morning there, and we just cannot. <laughs> well, thank you again so much. So we won't keep you um, any longer. Um, is there anything else you would like to tell the viewers? Um, yeah, I would. So one thing I'd like to tell the viewers, don't take your sewing too seriously. Don't bother making something that you could just buy in any old shop. Make, when, you, when you make something, you, you invest all that time in it. I think if you can afford it, you know, you, use really nice, special, good fabric and, um, you know, make a work of art. Yes, I agree. <laughs> well said. <laughs> And Dawn, do you have anything else? Um, yeah, I agree. Um, I can't thank you enough for coming on, Tree. I know that the different with the, the time zones and everything, so we really do appreciate you coming on. And uh, I'll definitely be watching your videos to see what comes up next, because you never know. That's It's very exciting. I love your channel. Thank you. And Can I say goodbye to Judd? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do one already. Goodbye, Judd. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for well. Yes, yeah, she sent a big sewing hug. <laughs> and next week, um, we have a return guest coming on um, from The Last Stitch, Joanna Lundstrom. She just made her first, uh, uh, just put out her first book a little while back, Sewing Active Wear. So definitely come oh, check out. Oh, really? Yeah, she's yeah, she amazing. She's, she's very lovely. Oh, she, she's British as well, yeah? Uh, no, no I should, she's in Sweden, isn't she? Oh, is she? What's yeah. her name again? She's if you check out the, la the Last Stitch, it's a, a YouTube channel. She does lots oh, of okay. sewing, active wear, sewing yes. with stretch, okay. knit fabrics. Very lovely young lady. We've had her on once before, and because she has a new book, she won. we asked her to come back and share about it. Yes. I've already yeah. used some of the techniques in it um, to help when I had my sister-in-law sew my pattern, and I was like, oh, I know how to do this, but... That's kind of tricky. Is there a simple form of that that might not be quite as awesome, but you know, still easier to sew? And yeah, look in her book. You know, she's got yeah. so many yeah. options. So yeah, um, yeah. So we don't want to talk okay. everyone's ear off all okay. night. Um, okay. Yes, Th thanks guys. Thank you very very much, Gentry. Thanks everyone watching. Thank thanks, Myra. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll see you all next week Tuesday on that sewing lab. Have a great night, everyone. <laughs> Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>